everyone, and welcome back to another special guest speaker series. Uh, today, we are so happy to welcome back Cheryl Easton. Cheryl, how are you today? I am great and so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, you're all so happy to have you back. So Cheryl was with us back in our first challenge back in October, where she did um, two great uh videos for us, uh, one on excellence in real estate and the other one on the ethical referral. And we had so many great co um, comments from um, the people in the challenge uh, that we had her back this time. And today it's who's choosing you. So before we get to that, Cheryl, um, for the people that are new to the challenge this time, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. And for the people that were with us back in October, what have you been doing since then? Okay, so my name is Cheryl Easton, and I am a realtor from Bancroft, Ontario, Canada, uh, one of the many cottage countries in Ontario. The, I'd like to think that we're a little bit the most affordable out of, uh, I would suggest, the big three or four. And um, I'm born and raised in this town. I've lived here for my whole life. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but it's been a while. And uh, and I love it here. And I've been selling real estate for seven years. Um, and you know what? It was the, it was the very best uh, decision I ever made. I love what I do. I love my clients. And uh, it's just... It's an amazing, amazing uh, ride that uh, that life has taken me on. So um, I saw you guys in October, and of course, you know, like we keep talking about pandemics. Um, with the uh, with the pandemic that's going on in uh, across the world, let alone in Canada and Ontario, we've seen a huge shift of clients coming out of the urban centers. So I have been extremely, extremely busy. Uh, with with my clients. As a matter of fact, over the Christmas holidays, I was only off for uh, New Year's Eve and Christmas, uh, sorry, and Boxing Day. Um, I had clients that wanted me to show them properties on Boxing Day. And I said, no, I am wearing my jammies <laughs> on Boxing Day and I'm taking a break. Um, but very, very, very busy. Um, speaking engagements have been consistent, which I'm very happy to do. Missing the in-person, just like us, we all are. We're seeing the in-person visits. I actually just got off a call from a, a colleague in Florida and um, we were scheduled to do a speaking engagement together and that had to be postponed and we were just talking about how how we, like everybody else, wants this, uh, this unfortunate pandemic to be over so we can be back with our colleagues and our friends, um, fellowshipping with them and uh, just, I don't know, I'm ready for a hug, Phil. I need a hug. <laughs> you know, I, I growing up in my adult life, I, I I'm not a hugger. I, I always introduce myself as someone who preferred his three foot bubble. Okay. So then you do not want to be around me because I am a <laughs> hugger. <laughs> like I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> I just see me running, running away down the street. <laughs> yeah, there he goes. Eh? So um, for everyone watching this video, uh, Cheryl is a part of our Facebook group. So please uh, post your questions, your comments. Uh, Cheryl will be able to answer them. Um, and yeah, let's get to it. So who's choosing you? I will take myself out of the picture and I will come back in at the end. Thank you so much, Phil. We'll see you in a little bit. Oh, you guys are so lucky you get to have me for all by yourself for 20 minutes or so. So, you know, again, once again, thanks to Dustin and Phil and welcome to the, all of those of you who are joining us um, from the Mega Momentum family, whether this is your second time, second or third time back or your first time. We are a wild and crazy bunch, but uh, I promise you, you're going to have some fun with us. So who's choosing you? A true leader has the confidence to stand alone, the courage to make tough decisions, and the compassion to listen to the needs of others. He does not set out to be a leader, but becomes one by the quality of his actions and the integrity of his intent. The who's choosing you statement, um, it can be a statement of a current status, or it can be a reflectory pause as to what direction the energy that we have within us is flowing. Is the energy flowing in? or is it flowing out? When the energy is flowing in, we are dependent on the approval of others. When it's flowing out, we're dependent on the approval of ourselves for the incredible lives that we lead or have the potential to lead. So, who's choosing you? Are they choosing you? 
the vast majority the vast majority of society concludes that our success is measured or dependent um, in our personal and our business lives at the threshold in time that an outside person or an outside influence or a client chooses us for the desired result or task at hand. The moment of being chosen or picked is the moment of arrival or validation. Think about it. So here's a great example. If you take your phone and we all do this and we post something on social media, post a picture, post that you just sold a house, post something about an opinion you have about maybe, you know, a political opinion, a religious opinion or whatever, an opinion about what's going on in the world, an opinion about COVID. How long before you go back to your phone or your computer to see when you get a reaction? Some of you might already have um, it set up on your phone to receive automatic pings when somebody does comment on your post. How long before you go back to check? How, do you wait a minute? Do you wait five minutes, 10 minutes, a half an hour, an hour a day? I'm going to suggest the time frame is probably pretty short because you are going to be looking for the reaction of what other people think about what you are doing. If you don't believe that, here's something else. Ladies, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on the girls because I, I, I think guys do this, but they don't do it as much as girls. Ladies, when you're posting a picture to Facebook of yourself, how do you do it? We all know this is what you do. You point up and to the left because we don't want to see this and we want to, because we're thinner from above, right? That's what we want people to see. And we might turn our bodies and sort of contort them around so that they can't see the little missing middle that's going on there. We do this, I do it, you do it, everybody does it because we wanna show our best side because we wanna get the best reaction. Can you imagine if my, like if you happen to watch me on Facebook or any of my social media streams, <laughs> I don't know what the reaction would be if I looked you straight in the camera and I sort of did my, see, like, look at this, this is horrible. If I did this and uh, my hair was all a mess and I had, had, you know, messy clothes on. No, I do something to make, to make sure that I portray a professional image. But the question is, is how, what, what kind of reaction are you looking for? Why are you doing that? You're doing it because you want somebody to choose you. You want somebody to pick you. You want somebody to like you. <sighs> Energy that is placed solely on a reactive action has a tendency to fade pretty quickly and leaves one searching for the next hit or reaction. This quickly spirals into quick paced fast acting, shallow thinking, and ultimately poor personal and business practices. I am part of a... Uh, a Facebook group, a private Facebook group for realtors. And I actually witnessed this. Um, somebody from out, out of the area was asking for a recommendation for a realtor in another area. Who would you recommend? I've got a client that's going to that area. Who would you recommend? Somebody recommended a particular woman, a realtor who's been a realtor for a while. And uh, she's older. And then somebody else recommended a younger, maybe uh, more attractive in some people's minds, agent. The younger attractive agent came on to the chat and said, why would you choose that other person that you're recommending? She doesn't even have a social media presence. Have you seen the number of followers I have? Have you seen the number of people, like this was actually typed in, in, in the comment section. Have you seen the number of people who like my posts and follow me? This agent was saying that the only reason that she should be chosen was because she had the most likes on Facebook. This same agent, um, I, I know who it is personally, um, that agent is quite a showman. They put on quite a show to attract business. And, uh, unfor but unfortunately that business is typically very short lived. Uh, you know, one client and then it's done. There is no, uh, no thought about the long game, no thought about the consequence of, uh, of not being able to live up to the show that you put on. 
the other agent has been selling real estate for a very, very long time and has a very well established line of uh, referral uh, business. And, um, and in a heartbeat, I would recommend that agent. But just so unfortunate that we were able to, it, it, I guess in a way we were able to learn from it, but very unfortunate that somebody was suggesting that another agent was not viable because they didn't have enough likes on Facebook. Who is choosing you? Energy that is placed into proactive action has a habit of having a longer effect and often overflows into the next result, ergo referrals. So a question I think we have to ask ourselves, you know, like if you say to me, well, Cheryl, well, how do I know? How do I know if I'm conducting my business, my personal life based on, is it about who's choosing you or am I choosing you? So I'm just going to run through some questions and you're going to have some answers right here, like really, really quickly. And you're going to know in a hurry whether or not you're waiting for others to choose you or whether you're choosing yourself. So. Here we go. When you get up in the morning, do you, so you get up out of bed and you're starting to do your, uh, your daily routine. Um, why are you up? Who are you getting ready for? Who are you going about this daily routine for? You have your shower and you get dressed. When you're picking your clothes to put on, who are you putting those clothes on for? Who are you dressing for? Are you dressing for you? Or are you dressing for, for who you're going to see? Get in your vehicle to go to work. And I, I, I'm quite confident there's a lot of people who would be saying, I'm getting in the vehicle, I'm going to work. Who am I going to work for? There's going to be a group of people that are going to say, man, I do not want to be going to work today, but I have to because I got to pay bills for other people. Or there's a group of people who's going to say, you know what, I'm really happy to be getting in the, in, in the vehicle to go to work because I want to go and help people with my in my job. And when I get to the office and I'm preparing for my appointments, who am I preparing for? Am I preparing for other people or am I preparing for me? When I update that social media, who am I updating that for? Am I updating it for me so that I can get a reaction? Or am I updating it so that I can teach people? In my personal life, in, in the real estate world and in my motivational speaking world, Every, almost every one of my posts is about sharing and finding teachable moments. It's not about, I sold that house today. It's about, um, I sold the house and this is a lesson I learned. It might, it's, uh, it's about, you know, this is my amazing, I, I share about my family. I share about, um, if you follow my motivational speaking page on Facebook, it's about uh, just different little snippets of things that I have learned that I'm trying to teach to get people to think um, and to, uh, to create conversation around that. It's not about the reaction. It's about what can I teach people? What can I help people to enrich their lives by? When I go to the grocery store, who am I shopping for? Here's, this is a fun one. Think about it. So you go to the grocery store and you run in to get something really quick for supper tonight because you don't want to cook. So I am making hot dogs, so hot dogs and buns. But um, I don't want people to see that I'm just making hot dogs and buns. So I'm going to go over to the produce section and I'm going to pick up a tray of vegetables and a fruit platter and put that ahead of the hot dogs and buns so that maybe people will see that I'm actually eating really healthy. Um, we all do this. I know we do. And so the question is, is who are you buying groceries for? Are you buying them for you to be able to sustain food for yourself and for your family? Or are you buying it for other people to show them something a little bit different than maybe what really is? When you get home at night, who are you going home for? Are you going home because you want to go to a place that, that offers you safety and complacency? Sorry, safety and uh, security. We don't want complacency. Or are you going home um, because that just happens to be where you have to go because you have to make supper, because you have to take um, the kids to Little League, because you have to do laundry? And here's a really big one. When you are home on the weekends and at nights and you're going out into your community to volunteer, who are you volunteering for? Are you volunteering for yourself so that you can maybe create some status in the community so that maybe you can meet some people that are also volunteering that maybe they might want to sell their house? 
Are you volunteering so that you can get your name in the paper or a picture or something on social media? Or are you volunteering so that you can be of service, so that you can offer the, um, the resources that you have been given, whether that's time or money or whatever? Why are you doing these things? Are you doing all of these things for other people? Or are you doing them for yourself? The list can go on. If your answer to any of these things is anyone other than yourself, the energy is flowing in. And the only one who benefits, so you're sucking, you're bringing in. Your only reason you're doing something is because of what somebody else is going to think from the outside. It's from the outside in. But the answer has to be you. It has to be from here out. I want to do those things to be able to make a better life for myself, my family, for the people around me. On the top, it might, it might appear actually really very selfish. Some people might say, well, you know what? You can't be choosing you guys. You'd be choosing everybody else first. No, you cannot be enough for other people in your business life and in your personal life until you're enough for you. Until you choose you. I'll give you a quick example of that. I was married for 17 years. And I thought it was my responsibility to live in service to my husband, his family, and my children. And I, by the time 17 years came to the end of 17 years, I was nothing more than a maid in that family. I was nothing more than a chauffeur. I was nothing more than somebody who served without getting anything back. I did that because I thought it was the right thing to do. It's not my children's fault. They didn't know at the time, you know, what like that dynamic. Um, and they've grown up to be wonderful adult children who, uh, who, you know, have obviously changed, changed their way of thinking about that kind of thing. Um, but I gave my life for those people. And I did not get anything back because I wasn't choosing me. I was choosing them. And when the, time, when the day came that I was given the opportunity to choose me and realized there was a little light bulb that went off that said, you know what, Cheryl, if you don't start choosing you, you're not going to be healthy for very much longer. And as soon as I started to choose me and started to do better for me and make more healthy decisions for myself, um, you know, things started to fall away. Things started to be shed away. The marriage shed away. You know, my, uh, my job prospects at that time shed away. You know, family, friends, and things like that shed away. But in the shedding away came the new opportunities and a healthy, much healthier lifestyle. And as a result, I am the person I am today. And it was, it's actually really interesting because I just had a phone call from a, from a friend that I hadn't seen since probably about 97. Just, uh, she called me out of the blue two, two days ago and she said that she had found me on Facebook and uh, she was creeping through my Facebook and ghosting me. Um, and she came across my motivational speaker page and she couldn't believe it. She said, Cheryl, she said, when the last I knew you, there was no way you would ever speak. You would, there's no way that you would ever speak your opinion or speak your mind or talk about anything that was concerning to you. You only ever talked about what other people, what was best for other people. And she was flabbergasted. She was happy, but she was flabbergasted. So a change came and now I live in freedom and peace. And secure in the knowledge that whatever I do in my life, from the time I get up to the time I go to bed, I've done it because I've chosen me first. Not how does this gain me in a capitalist way, but how does this make me a better person? How does this make me a better mother? How does this make me a better realtor? How does this make me a better person to be able to serve? How does this make me to be the best human being I can be at this time? You cannot expect your clients and society to choose you if you've never chosen yourself. It's simple math. It's apples and oranges. Two plus two equals four. It's a very simple concept, but very difficult 
to grab onto because we're ingrained that you always have to be choosing the other person's. You always have to look to other people first. I am not in any way suggesting that, like, as you know, if you follow along with me, I'm very client centered, client focused in my approach to my real estate career. I chase the client before I chase the check. I chase the client because I know the check will come. I, if I chase the check, I'm going to have the client one time and that'll be it. I'll get paid enough, but I'll have lost out on that opportunity. Who's choosing you? You know what? Henry David Thoreau gave us a really great quote. And he says, if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life that he has imagined, he will be met with success in the common hour. If you choose to advance confidently in the direction of your dream and you endeavor to live the life that you have imagined, you will be met with success now in the common hour. You don't have to wait. You can choose to live your best life now, but you have to advance confidently towards that. You know, I'm not sure when I'm going to be t uh, um, on, uh, on, on screen for you guys, but this taping was done on... Uh, on the auspicious occasion, the same day as uh, the inauguration of the new president, Joe Biden. And, you know, I wasn't going to add this. It, this wasn't originally part of my, my presentation today, but I can't help but add this thought because it ties in. You know, in his speech today, he stated that his whole soul was in it to be the president of the United States of America. He had put his whole soul in it. Consider this. 81,283,098 people chose Joe Biden to be the president of the United States of America. But not one of those 81 million votes would have mattered if Joe had not believed in his heart that he was the right person for the job, if he had not believed that he had prepared himself over a lifetime for the task at hand today, if he had not in solitude at some point in time looked in the mirror and chosen himself for the task long before the American people ever did. We can reflect on other great leaders that have chosen to believe in themselves, chosen to act themselves, chosen to lead themselves long before anybody else believed in their cause. Martin Luther King for the American Civil Rights Movement, Emmeline, Emmeline Pankhurst the, uh, of the Women's Suffrage Movement, Marie Curie, the first female scientist to win the Nobel Prize at a time when females were not allowed to practice in the lab in public. They had to find... Uh, hidden rooms to be able to conduct their experiments. Elizabeth Blackwell, the first female doctor at a time when it was considered inappropriate for females to practice on male cadavers for sake that they may, you know, take a spell. Thomas Edison, the light bulb. The people who laughed at him when he suggested that we could make a movement from the candle to electricity. So what happens? What happens now if we make our personal and business decisions based on having chosen the highest and best end result for ourselves first, that we approach each day already having chosen ourselves for greatness, that we not wait for the approval of others? that we already know that we have chosen to conduct ourselves with love, with joy, with peace, with patience, with kindness, with goodness with faith, gentleness, and self-control, that we are confident in the knowledge that those who are aligned with our personal and business practices are the ones we want to be standing beside and the ones we want to be working with. What happens when we present ourselves to the world with the confidence that we have already won, that we are enough for the task we've been called to do, that we are fully capable and ready for everything that the universe has for us today, tomorrow, and beyond. So I ask you,
who's choosing you? I hope it's you. And we chose you. You did choose me. And I'm um, so glad you did. No, listen to what you did choose you. And it, it was one of our, our better decisions. Like, I, I'm friends with you on Facebook, and I, I watch your Who's Choosing You posts all the time. And okay, the yeah. relationship <laughs> that you've built and the, the feedback you get for being who you are, it's, it's really cool to watch. You know, um, that's a really great example. I actually had somebody call me, literally call me out on that. They're like, Cheryl, why are you doing that? Why are you saying the Who's Choosing You? Who cares who chooses you? And it was a great learning opportunity because I was able to share, you're missing the point. Who's choosing me? I put those up um, just for refer for reference. If you go on my Facebook page, Cheryl Easton on Facebook, go look for it, it's there. Every once in a while, when I have the opportunity to obtain a, re a referral, if a, an agent refers me, refers to me, I put a post of the two of us together. And, it state, and the headline is, who's choosing you? And it's talking about um, establishing beautiful relationship with other realtors in other areas so that they will choose you and that they will choose you based on your reputation. So it's not about choosing me. It's about a learning opportunity for you to establish great relationships with people. So when it comes time to the referral time, they're looking at you. Nice. Yeah, like it's, it's so a great thing. It is. So like I said at the beginning, uh, Cheryl is a part of our Facebook group. Um, please reach out, um, ask comments, questions in this video. Um, and like I said, you can go over to her Facebook page as well. Thank you so very much, Cheryl, for joining us again for the challenge. And again, we most definitely will welcome you back for the next challenge as well. So for everyone out there, thank you again for watching. And I will see you at the next video. Bye, everyone. Bye.